So we are now on to D1 chapter 4 root inspection and actually this is where kind of like the origins of graph theory which is pretty much what most of D1 is all about. This is where like the origins of it really comes from. So we have this mathematician here who we've already come across before called Euler. He was a Swiss mathematician in the 18th century, so he was born in 1707. And it's all about this particular place that we've got here, which was at the time called Königsberg and is now called Kaliningrad, which is in Russia. And this particular town at the time had these seven bridges to this little island that we have or in this sort of area. And I'll show you where these seven bridges are that we're talking about. There's a bridge here, 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 here here, here, and here. And on this little island here is where the cathedral is. And actually, this is like a modern day Google Maps version of this particular part of the map. And you can see actually some of the bridges have since disappeared since the 18th century. So I've added in this bridge here, here, and here. And there was still the previous bridges here, 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 and here. And so what he actually considered, Euler considered whether it was possible to walk through the city of Königsberg, crossing its seven bridges exactly once each, and returning to the starting point. And in 1736, he resolved this problem, also laying the foundations for graph theory. And so my first question is, is the route possible? So you might like to pause the video and either think about this part up here or here, or you might even like to think of this, to decide whether you think this is possible or not. And we're gonna then try and explore why it is or why it isn't. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is how I have drawn the network to represent this map that we've got here. So this particular landmass that I've got, this is kind of like this node or this vertex that we have here. And then I've got this particular landmass, which is going to be connected to these bridges, is like this one up here. I've got a landmass that's at the bottom, which is like the one down here. And then I've got this landmass over here. Actually, I'll do that in a different color. I'll do that in an orange. I've got this landmass over here. And so you can see these edges that I've got that are all connected. They are the same edges that we have here as if I were to use the bridges. So I've got this one, I've got this one, and then I have got going to the orange one up here, going to the orange one here, and going to the orange one here. So although it doesn't look exactly the same, these are isomorphic graphs because I've used it to represent this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and trace the path just using a highlighter that's going to go along here. So let's say I started from the blue node. I could go to the red, then I could go to the green, and then I might go back to the red, back to the blue, still only having done the bridges once though, because remember the bridges are the edges that we've got. Then I might go here, and then you can see what our final problem is going to be. I can either use this bridge to go to the red, but then I wouldn't be able to do the other bridge without having to repeat a bridge, or I could go from the orange to the green, but the same problem is going to happen. So I'm going to then have to go back along this arc or this one, um, or either of those bridges in order to be able to do the final one. So is this route possible? No, it is not traversable. It is not something that we can do here. We're going to try and explore why that isn't possible in a second, but you might like to begin thinking about that yourself. And so this chapter is kind of split up into three sections. We've got these Eulerian and semi-Eulerian graphs, which is kind of like a little bit more about graph theory. Then we have root inspection, which is about how you explore like all of the different edges on a network. And then there's a variation of it where you get some a little bit more complex kind of versions, which is only included in A2 that we've got here. So this part is A2 only. So if you are doing AS and you're not studying anything for A2, you can obviously skip that part in exercise 40. And as usual, I'm going to have some exam questions throughout this to help us. So we're going to begin by thinking about the aptly named Eulerian graphs. So an Eulerian graph is one that can be traversed according to Euler's bridges problem setup. So it's a connected graph that has a trail or a route where every edge or bridge is visited and you can return it to your start point, which is obviously a vertex that we've got here. Now, if you can do this, the trail itself is called an Eulerian circuit or an Eulerian cycle that we've got here. And so this network was not Eulerian. It was not possible to traverse all of the different edges and return to the starting points. But I've got a few here that should be possible to do this. So I'm going to just start here. I'm going to start with this. I'm going to say, OK, great. I go up here, 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 here and here. So it can be done without doing the um, without crossing over any of them twice. And there's many ways you could do it. I could go along. I could then cross back over 
and I could still get back to that starting point. And just one more demonstration, it doesn't have to be the same starting point each time. You will always be able to do that with an Eulerian graph. And obviously I'm just going to very quickly demonstrate it with this one. So I'm going to pick this start point. So I'm going to come up here. It's very satisfying to always get them to kind of come back to the beginning. And then my last one, I'm going to start here. And so they can all be traced out without kind of lifting your pen off from the paper and without repeating any of the arcs that we've got here. So let's think about what property these Eulerian graphs might have. If you start and end at the same vertex, you must enter and leave every vertex in order to get back to the start. So what does this tell us about the degree of each vertex? Well, I'm going to try and spell this one out really loud and clear by doing a little arrow for in, um, in red for like leaving. And I'm going to do an arrow in green for entering. So if I'm going to say that this is my start vertex here, and I'm just going to do it with this one, I'm going to leave. And then the next thing I'm going to do is enter another one. I'm going to leave that vertex, and then I'm going to enter another one. I'm going to leave that vertex and enter another one. Then I'm going to leave that vertex and enter another one. I'm going to leave that vertex, and then I'm going to enter another one. I'm going to leave that vertex and then I am going to enter another one, which is right next to it. I leave that vertex and enter another one. I am, I've done that one in the wrong color. And enter another one. And then I'm going to leave that vertex, enter another one. And then I'm going to leave that vertex and I finish off by entering the one that I started with. And so we're going to look at these kind of sections like one at a time. So this vertex has kind of these ones associated with it. And this is kind of this logic of what I was describing, that if you're going to enter and leave every vertex in order to get back to the start. So here I entered and left it. And later on, I entered and left it. Well, actually, I think I entered and left it. And then I entered and left it like that. You should know something about the degrees of all of these vertices. Let's just double check that this is going to be the case. If you have to enter and leave for all of them as pairs, then all of the degrees should be even. So I'm just going to say they all come in pairs. The entering and exiting or leaving all come in pairs. So all the vertices degrees vertices degrees must be even. And you can see that on this graph if we've got here, this beginning one has a degree two, then there's a degree four, two, and you can also see it from the number of arrows as well, four, two, two, and two. So all of them are even, and you can check with these ones, I won't be doing it for you, but you can just double check mentally as you go around and count them, that all of the degrees are going to be even if it is one that is Eulerian, which means that it can be, tra be traversed starting at one point, going around all of the different bridges or the edges and getting back to the starting point. So just verify that with these two, that all of the degrees that we've got here are even for them. And then we get a different kind of graph. We get semi-Eulerian graphs. Now, semi-Eulerian graphs are slightly different. It is one where every edge is traversed, but there is not the restriction of starting and ending at the same point. So I've got graphs that are really similar to these three, but I've actually changed them. I've either added or removed some edges. So in this one, I've removed this um, vertex and these edges. I've added an edge into this one here. And I don't know what I've done with this one. I think I've just added one part along the top here like this. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate how you could do these ones. And then we're going to try and read through like why this is true. OK, we're going to look at this part that we've got. So you might like to pause this and see if you can actually trace them out yourself. Remember, this time you can start and end at different points. OK, you don't have to start and end at the same point. So this one, I'm going to start here and come around like this. And then I think what I'm going to do is go, I'll go here. Great. And I've done it. I started and ended at the same point. So here was my start and here was my end point. OK, let's do this another one again. I'm going to start at the bottom like this. And I did do that. So I started here 
and I have ended here. Now I'm going to deliberately do one that I can't work. I'm going to do a, one that deliberately won't work with me trying to do this. So I'm going to start at this one. And then I've got to a bit of a pickle here because if I go down, it's finished, I can't go there. And if I go across, it's finished, I can't go there. So that was me attempting to start it here and it did not work when I started it there. So let's have a think about the logic of what's going on and see if we can break down what's happening here. So I've said, if you start and end at different vertices, what does this tell us about the degree of the start and end ones? Well, as a hint, for the start, you will exit from it, then enter it later on, and then eventually you will need to exit it again because you're not going to be finishing up there. So what about the end vertex? Well, let's just actually go back to think about what we're talking about with the start vertex here. For the start vertex, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to leave it, which I think I did in red, actually. You're going to have to exit it. Then you're going to have to enter it. And because you're not going to be finishing there, you need to leave it. And for the end vertex, it's going to be a different kind of process, okay? Because if we're going to end by entering it, the first thing we're going to need to do is enter it and then we're going to need to leave it. So I'll show you that with a demonstration with this one that we've got up here by doing it with some arrows, okay? So I'm just going to double check. I did do, yeah, exit was in red. So for this start one, I think this was the path I did. I exited and then I entered. I exited and then I entered, exited, entered, um, exited, entered, exited, entered. I think I then went, I think I went this direction, not that it really matters. I'm going to exit here, enter here, exit here. I don't think I did do this path, but whatever, still going to work. Exit there, enter there, exit, enter, exit, enter, and exit, which leaves us with our final bit here where I enter inside this one that we've got the end one so look at the start one it has the two red arrows and the green arrow the two red arrows and the green arrow that we've got for the start and then for the end one we've got the two green and the red for this part that we've got here and that's because we had to enter it then we left it at some point and we needed to finish up by entering in that part that we've got there. So what does this tell us then about the degree of the start and the end ones? Well, it doesn't have to be this set of arrows. It could be um, just an odd number. It can always have to be for the start one, an exit, enter, exit, enter, exit. It always has to be something about it being odd. So what I'm gonna say here is that the start and end vertices, start and end must be odd and the rest must be even. And you can think about why they must be even. It's because for each of these vertices, you need to enter it and exit it, enter it and exit it, or pairs of entering and exiting that we've got there. So I'm just gonna get rid of that highlight and I'm gonna try and show you how this one we could do. So let's identify the vertices. That's even, that's even, that's even. That one's odd, that one is odd. That one in the middle is a four, 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 and two. So my error in this one was I started at two. I need to start at three and end at three. So let's do this in like a pink color. I'm going to start at the three. Let's go like this. So I'm going to go here. Just when you think it isn't possible, it is, and you can start and end at these places. So here is my start point, and here is my end point. You must pick the odd ones, and if it has just two odd ones, then it is semi-Eulerian. So let's kind of think about a bit of a summary of what's going on with this. I've got this little box here that says Eulerian graph. All of the vertices have even degrees. Semi-Eulerian graph is only two vertices have odd degree, and they are the start and end vertices. Obviously, if only two have an odd degree, then the rest must be even degree. Now, both of them must be connected to be Eulerian or semi-Eulerian. Obviously, if the graph is not connected, you can't 
can't trace all of the the path of the graph altogether, can you? And I also just wanted to remind us about the fact that we have the handshaking lemma, which was from, I think, chapter two, maybe it was chapter three, no, it was chapter two, which is that the sum of the degrees is two times the number of edges, which was that handshaking lemma that we've talked about before. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do two questions here, and then that gives you enough information to go and have a look at doing some of the questions from exercise 4a. So for this one, I'm going to draw an Eulerian graph with five nodes and seven arcs that we've got here. So first of all, the fact that it's Eulerian means that all of them need to be even. If there are seven arcs, well, let's think of the sum of the degrees. It's going to be two times the number of edges or two times the number of arcs. So the sum of the degrees is going to be two times seven, which is 14. So I need five nodes or five vertices whose um, uh, edges will sum to 14. So I think I could probably do like a two, a two, and a two. That makes six. And then I need some more even numbers. So I could do a four and a four, okay? Let's see if I can draw this. There might be other ones you could possibly draw. So they need to all be connected because it's Eulerian. So I'm gonna start off by doing, uh, I want two of them to have four. So I could do, the way of doing it with four is definitely connecting one to all of the others. I'll do it for another one as well. It's already got one, so I'll do three more. So that's one, two, three. Let's double check I've got them. So this one has order four. You always just put a little circle around it to show that we're saying it's the, the order. That one's got two, that one's got two, that one's got two. Yep, four, four, two, two, and two. And I wanted there to be seven arcs, which there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see it's Eulerian. You can start and finish anywhere, and you can always get back to the, the well, you can't start and finish anywhere. Yeah, you can, just, you, wherever you start, that's where you're gonna finish up as well. Now we're gonna try and draw a graph with five vertices with degrees two, two, four, four, and four that is not Eulerian. Now, the interesting thing about this is all of them are even and we don't want it to be Eulerian. So how are we gonna do that? Well, what we're gonna do, and this is a sneaky way of doing this, but they have asked this in an exam before, is we're gonna do something that is not connected because if it's not connected, it's definitely not Eulerian that we've got here. So let's start off with my five vertices and I'm not gonna connect them all together. So let's do these two. Let's do these two with just a two. Now, if they just have a two, I could connect that one to that one and I could connect that one to that one. So now this one has degree two and this one has degree two. Now, I definitely don't want to connect them here. Otherwise, it's probably going to become Eulerian. So now I want these three to have four. OK, well, let's just connect them all together to start with like this. Now, that one has got two, two and two. So how am I going to make them four? Don't forget that we have loops okay remember loops can increase the degrees as well so i'm going to add a loop there a loop there and a loop there so that now this one has one two three four remember a loop counts for two one two three four one two three four so we can see we have correctly drawn a graph it's not connected but it's still a graph that has degrees two two four four and four that is not eulerian so i think you should now go and have a go at some of the questions from exercise 4a and these ideas of eulerian graphs are going to be tested in a couple of exam questions in the next video